Thanks for staying with us. Now, Forex trading <laughs> may make you rich if you can take risk and have a deep pocket or an unusually skilled um, currency trader, if you're an unusually skilled currency trader. But for the average retail trader, rather than being an easy road to riches, Forex trading can be a rocky highway to enormous losses and potential penury because the market can be volatile. There is also the risk of losing money when trading a currency pair. In addition to the inherent risk linked to trading, with Forex trading, you need to add margins, trading, and leverage, which means that you can trade large amounts with little initial capital. The majority of our youth today, rather, are constantly online and neck deep into digital trading. So we must understand the griefs and the gains of this business if you want to survive in Nigeria. All right, so please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WishAfrica1 with the hashtag WishShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 Now, if you have traded before and you've lost money, let us know so we can ask. <laughs> but let me come to AK. AK, have you ever done Forex trading before? Before I bring in our guest. <laughs> no. Fortunately. See, I was sounding I very professional, like I, I know haven't. anything. I don't I, know I, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I haven't. And the reason why I haven't is because I haven't given it enough time to study um, the environment well enough. I'm, I'm, I'm somehow risk averse. If I do not, my investment principle is if I do not understand it, I will not invest, no matter hmm. how lucrative anybody says it is. Hmm. So I have to understand it for myself before I invest. So I know that I'm taking the risks by myself. Um, I've had people approach me to say, you know, give me the money, I'll trade for you. And what I told them, it was very, it was very funny. What I told them is that, can we start with the initial ca capital? When I make the game, you can take your money back. <laughs> Just lend me money to start. But but it's something that I probably might see myself in the future being more involved. But now I I know no. But but, but AK, you are in the finance space for goodness sake. I don't understand. Shouldn't you be jumping? Because I'm exactly. sure you must be Maybe seeing that's the numbers. The why I have not. But but you must be seeing the numbers. Maybe that's the reason why I have not. Eh? Hey, why? Yes. Who are, I'm seeing the numbers from professionals that that's what that's their daytime job. Mm. Who are, my life is very busy, <laughs> like extremely busy. I cannot sit down and be looking at an image. I will give my friend Temi, our Temi, our guru, money to trade for me. Yes, I can do that. But to sit down and say, okay, oh, it's simple. It's enough for your phone. We'll copy some al algorithm. We'll give you. The statistics are alarming. The failure rate in different countries, the statistics are alarming. And I cannot, with what I know, go into what I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. You are even, at least you have an idea of numbers and figures when it comes to money. Me, we no not know nothing. Unko. <laughs> like, I am just so, you know, I, I, and I think that maybe that's why I, I would love to learn because, um, like you rightly, for me, I, I actually don't mind taking the risk. I'm a risk taker, but I, I also um, I've, I've learned that, you know, Whatever it is that is what doing is what doing well. So for you to be able to do it exactly. well, you must understand it well, you know. So you can't just say, oh, because you're a risk taker, you just throw your money at it. Yeah, I get you. All right, so let me bring in our guest. Elijah Felix believes firmly in inclusion of youth and women in leadership and decision making. He works with different organizations, both locally and internationally, uh, focused on youth and women development as a volunteer. He's a self-thought um, discretionary financial trader as a forex trader and passionate about learning and development so since he's passionate he will teach us some of the things that he's learned and he's joined me by live in studio rather thank you so much thank elijah for much. joining me thank you very much all right so you you heard our little banter on forex right i know forex is okay so i have had a lot of friends They've said, oh, I come for this meeting on Saturday, coffee meeting. I say, I know they come. They say, come this one. They, they want to teach me this. I say, I, I, I'm not interested. For some strange reason, a lot of us, when we hear Forex, and just like when we also talked about cryptocurrency, we just, first of all, it's just fraud, 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 <laughs> fraud, 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 you know, that comes to mind. But I want to believe that there are honest and genuine businesses happening online and this is an opportunity for young people especially now that we are looking for job left right and center to actually find something and make a decent living so maybe just give us a background on what forex trading is about first before we go into all the all the myths and the grips all right thank you very much Wal, for having me on the show and thank you very much Aki. Yes. Good to see you. well uh, forex trading is an interesting um 
um, topic because it's anything that has to do with money. People are always attracted or interested in money. I want to do something to make money. That's what they think. I want to make money. I want to earn money. Someone told me that you can't make money, but you can earn money. Mm. You're not licensed to make money. Government makes money. You earn it. Mm. And now, so since you can practically put your money and watch the charts, just like uh, your friend said, that it's not always easy for her to sit down and watch the charts, then you get a little bit tense and should I call it a bittersweet Bitter mm. sweet experience. But mm. before we get into the psychology of wins and losses, let me just say some things about forest research. I know why most people talk about I, I remember I, I, I remember I had the opportunity of listening to one one uh, man I, I enrolled in more like a mini training program, I think some couple of uh, time ago and mm. some, some period ago. So this man was like he had the opportunity of traveling to Ghana to facilitate the training on forex trading that some years back. And then when he got there, in the hotel where people, young persons came to learn. Somebody alerted the police. Oh, someone from Nigeria came around. Do, he's trying to teach them how to do 419. <laughs> Before you know, police sent their wagon, picked this man and his team, took them to the police station. This man had to start explaining, explaining, explaining. They didn't even understand what he was saying. It was like rocket science. Until he actually, they had to call one of the young uh, police officers on, on, on duty. Do you, okay, listen to what this man is saying. He had to explain, he said, okay, do you understand stuff? Oh, yes, you stop, buy shares. And they said, oh, that's what he used to explain. And then uh, they got the hotel and then they went back to this. So what I'm saying this is that a lot of persons think that uh, when you go on the internet to make um, uh, either trade as a forex trader or maybe um, transact a business, maybe mm -hmm. as an online marketer or something, they just tag you as a, as a fraudster and mm -hmm. it's wrong. We need to change our narrative. We are in the pandemic. The pandemic has, should I call it, as a facilitated another period of industrial rev revolution. We, are talk we were talking about AIs before. Mm. People don't understand what is AI. Now we are even going beyond AI mm. to more of connectivity. Mm. So people need to understand that there are different ways of transacting business. And this can be done virtually. Mm. It doesn't mean that you are a fraud. Mm. Now speaking about forex trading. Forex, as the name implies, everybody knows what for a foreign exchange. Mm. But they don't really seem to do what they know is just they limit it to the um, average broad exchange. We know the traditional broad exchange. I go to buy dollar. I want to use dollar to pay my child school fees. I need to fund my domiciliary account. That's what you know. But the world has gone beyond these levels. There are many ways of doing things. Right from the period of, I think, in 1971, when uh, the Richard Nixon exchange, um, the U.S. president introduced a floating exchange rate for U.S. dollar against major currency pairs. Mm. That's where actually when forex trading actually started. Be prior to that time in 1944, dollar was pegged at 35 dollar uh, uh, $35 per, uh, per ounce of good. You understand? So, and then there, there was this constant static exchange rate between dollar and major currencies. That was during the wake of the Second World War. It continued until 1971. Then in 1971, banks, government agencies were actually involved. But with the advent of internet technology in the I think, let me say, in the mid-80s or so, mm. um, retail traders like you and I could participate. But then that was not, we're not talking of Africa, we're talking about uh, the world powers, the yeah, developed yeah. countries that had access to the internet. And then when it eventually, internet technology came into Africa and other third world countries, towards the late 90s, or let's say, when did forest, actual, forest trading actually became uh, something of uh, a, a known social interest in Nigeria? I think it should be in the mid, uh, let's say around 2004-05. That's where you had some folks talking about forex trading in Nigeria. So people were just beginning to understand the usage of internet technology. And that, that's where forex trading became very known all over the world, even in third world countries. So that enables retail traders to sit at the click of the button to buy or sell any currency pay of their choice. Mm. So that's how forex trading actually worked. Mm. And then there are participants in the forex market. If you look at the chart I sent earlier, um, if we can have that on the screen, mm. uh, you see that they are participants. Yeah, yeah the, there is a pie, not mm. the pie chart. Mm. The pie chart I sent about participants in the forex market. Mm. The pie chart. Um, you see there is a bicycle there. The mm. bicycle shows that um, the control of the a vehicle is the steering, right? Mm. The way you want to control a, a bicycle is the pedal. You can see that the pedal is the smallest part of the bicycle. The, the steering is the smallest part of the car. So it means that the participants in the market, we have different participants. We have the large commercial banks. We have, mm -hmm. we have um, government bureaus. We have hedge funds. And the large commercial bank, government bureaus, the large commercial banks that really basically manage transactions, balance of trades between country, import, export, and all those things. Actually very few compared to the number of persons in the forest market. But these people are actually the main control of the market, mm. even though nobody controls the market. An average volume of over three, five to $6 million is being traded daily. 
So now, just like the bicycle pedal used mm -hmm. in the charts, uh, the pie charts, now that bicycle pedal, as small as it is, directs, gives it sense of direction to the bicycle, controls the, the movement. And so that's yeah. the way it is too. And the, the large commercial bank, their decision based on the government policies influences how traders, the psychology of traders, how they respond to the market. So the retail traders we have in the world are usually over 90% of the participants, but it contributes 10% to the market. Hmm. Just like the 80-20 rule, Brian Tracy said, mm. if you want to achieve 80% of your success, do the 20% of the things you need to do in life to achieve 80% of your success. Okay, so it's now. the rule of life. It applies everything. All right. Okay. <laughs> Over to you. <laughs> okay. So, so he has already, in fact, he touched on some of the things that I wanted to ask. And, and then he talked about how the large corporates, even though you have the retail being, you know, a lot in number, but in terms of absolute power, the large corporates. So, you know, I was proud to this. I was looking at the rate of failure in forex trading. And in South Africa, it is higher, 70 to 80%, around the same in the US and in the UK. But with all this, um, you have, you know, you have, and um, I think you have proposed that one of the solutions of unemployment is forex trading. Hmm. Please, looking at the failure rate, looking at what is needed to start, do you still share that optimism that forex trading is really the, the, the road out, the solution, one of the solutions to unemployment in this country? Well, I would say that learning a skill is a way out of, could be, or is a way out of unemployment and poverty in Nigeria, especially for young people. Now, I emphasize skill, not forex trading. The reason is, we most participants, oh, I was there before anyway, when I was much, much um, younger in the, in the system, because I, I, while I was in secondary school, I think before I left secondary school, I left secondary school in 2008. In 2005, I got access to uh, learning about forex. So they are the ones they harvested from secondary school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I actually, I, I actually went somewhere and I saw, there was a program I attended one time, I think in church, and mm -hmm. I saw a very wealthy man that came into church with a big Homer Jeep. That was 2005. You know, Homer 2 was the reigning vehicle there, not the G-Wagon we have now. Mm. And then I learned the man was a forex trader. And in my mind, I was like, wow, this is quite interesting. I saw a lot of young people running after him in church. I was like, you must give us money. You cannot pack this guy in church. You're not set to boys. But me, I didn't join them. I told myself that if this man becomes... He became successful trading forex trading. I, I like to learn. I don't want to be giving fish. I want to learn how. I to want fish. to learn how to fish. So I begin to start. I started my investigation. I learned and I discovered that um, skill is. I, I was thinking that when I just learned it, it's not. I, I was good in mathematics and with the knowledge I had with my bachelor of engineering, I should be able to do it. And then when I went into this, thing, I discovered that man, what you see is not what you get. <laughs> <laughs> so now the thing is, I emphasize skill in the sense that people need to understand that. You need to develop. It's not only forex. You can learn any skill and become great at it. Mm. But when you want to trade, come with the mind, right mindset. Forex trading is not a great rich quick scheme. That's what people think. Mm. I need to hammer. I need to hammer. That's why many of them actually lose more of the time because the psychology to work against you. Mm. You need mm. to get your debug your mindset. Your mind is like a software. You need to put in the right, um, install the right applications mm. to make you function properly. Mm. So first and foremost. Yes, if you learn the art of trading, it's an art, it's an act, mm. it's a science. It's an art in the sense that you're watching the charts, you're listening to news, you want to understand people. It's an act because you need to take some certain step to restrain yourself. Mm. You said, you know, the, the thing is that the normal mindset we, we had growing up, they would tell you that um, when you feel... Uh, you have a child that feels mathematics or feels English. He's a failure and you make him feel bad. You shame him. And when you pass, you heal him. Mm. When you come with that mindset to trading, you want uh, that raw mindset without working on yourself. Mm -hmm. You actually want to work hard, thinking that my hard work will pay. I need to study more. I need to do trade more often. And you keep losing. So I'm emphasizing that youth, Nigerian youth should learn good skills. Skills and then see how they can use those skills to solve global problems. Mm. It's not all about forex trading. It mustn't be forex trading. Mm. Everybody must not trade forex, but anybody can trade forex. Mm. In fact, I look forward to see women participating more in this. Studies have shown that there are fewer women in Wall Street and participating. You know, I'm always very concerned about women because mm. I actually work for different organizations, especially uh, that are focused on youth development mm. and women inclusion in leadership and decision making. Mm. And including anything I do, I like to see that women are involved. Mm. Now, I did this, a certain survey, like I conducted a survey on 
women participating in, in financial trading, not just forex, because you're talking about stock, cryptocurrency, fi uh, vol volatility in this, features, commodity. The women participating in this are usually very, very few. But it will interest you to know that these women are actually one of the most successful. Exactly. Just like those days when we were studying engineering. It's not we easy to carry pregnancy for nine months. Exactly. Those days we were studying engineering. We study <laughs> five years. We are years. not good. <laughs> and our class, we just have about five ladies in the electronic class that time. And mm -hmm. I think five of them, three or four of them made the first class. Mm -hmm. So it's always like that. Mm -hmm. So anybody can learn a skill and solve problems. Global. Don't think local. Start local, go global. It mustn't be forest trading. But if you must trade forest, don't come with that mindset of I want to make money overnight. Not to you blow. Will lose. If you want to before. blow, you will lose. So I've learned from my mistakes. <laughs> okay. All right. So because we have uh, just one minute before the break, I'm just wondering now. Um, no, I think we should just take the break because if we start the conversation now, we will not finish it. Let's take a break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs>